back to basic. So are we forgetting our basics? Are we leaving our basics? And we are uh, going towards something else? So what the exactly basics means? Basic in, uh, if I say in Hindi, it is neev. Hamare, hamari jo neev hoti hai, that should be a strong one. Hamari makan ki neev ho, hamari intelligence ki neev ho, ya kisi bhi cheez ki neev ho. That should be a very much strong. And this basic is different for, uh, basic is different for everyone. D different for uh, everyone. So, we have must have listened in our uh, in youth time or in, in fact abhi bhi hume, uh, we, we must be listening that you don't know this many times in our rounds that we ask our uh, pg students jr1 jr2 and jr3 that you don't know this this is the word then this what this is this is the basic we are supposed that he that person should know this much if a first year student of undergraduate doesn't tell me about the what is the definition of diabetes, then it's okay for me. But if the final year student is not able to tell me what is the definition of diabetes, then it is not acceptable. Then yes, he is forgetting his basics. So then I will say, yes, you have to read it. Then you have to read it. If the new postgraduate who joined the uh, uh, department, he says, I, I don't, uh, I'm not able to recall all the definitions of continuous fever, remittent fever, intermittent fever, then it's okay. Then I still go and read it. But if third year postgraduate is not able to tell me about the uh, definitions of fever, then it is not acceptable. So this basic is different for your level of education, your level of experience. And it depends upon if if I'm a gynec if I am a, if I'm a physician, then I may not be able to know the complications of gynecology. I may not be able to understand the statics part. But we I must know to, uh, my my basics. So basics is a different for everyone else. So among the clinic uh, medical fraternity, we divide our life in three categories in clinical, research, and academics. When we joined medical colleges, I think nobody of us uh, thought of ki we will do, we will teach also. The idea of most of the undergraduate who enter in the medical college still is, we will serve the society. We will serve the society, we will see the patients. No idea about the research and academics, no at all. So let's see how the things are changing in this era. So in the clinical, I will go first in the history. So till recent past, many of our teachers used to say yes, history is the art. And you will get 90% of your diagnosis from the history itself. This we used to listen in our uh, uh, UG days, PG days, senior residency, but we say no, malab, we do the, we, we, our thought is about the investigational part. But it is true, as I am getting experience, I am getting this experience that yes, they were telling very truth. Now the, a, a detailed, detailed history from the patient can tell you the diagnosis. So history taking is an art by listening to the patient and noting the way in which they describe their symptoms. Physician gain values, insights, inflections of voices, his way of talking, his way of facial expressions, his way of walking, give us very important clues to the perception of clues towards the patient's disease. Although, sorry, the cursor is not, cursor me by cursor. So if we are not, uh, if we are not able to listen to the patient, if the patient lose faith in us, if he feels that the person, the physician is not listening to him, then he can hide many things. So history taking is very important. So I, if, uh, now I will give few examples. So a lady come to us with 28 year old lady came to the emergency department 
with the history of pain, abdomen, and shock. My second year PG was there. He, say, he thought of about intra-abdominal infection, and he started good antibiotic with fluid resuscitation, and he also started, as that lady doesn't respond to the uh, fluid resuscitation, he, he started on the noradrenaline also. So next day when we went and uh, see that lady, and I just asked, she was so pale. She was so pale. And then I just asked the lady what the, about, the, about her menstrual period, menstrual history. And she told that she is 10 days overdue. We stat got her UPT, and we sent that lady to the ultrasound. That UPT was positive, and ultrasound shows hemoperitoneum. So it was a, some, one of my teacher has told, if a young, if a young lady comes to, come to your emergency with such a, sh in the shock, always rule out ruptured ectopic. So that helps. And that lady, we, we saw that lady to a gynecologist, they just uh, take the patient to the OT and that patient discharge in three to four days. So we forget to take the basic history in this case. Another case, this was a 45-year-old lady, this was just a uh, fix, a 45-year-old lady who gave the history that he went, out, he went out of the home in the morning and then come back. And then when she come back, she was feeling lazy. Then she took her breakfast and she slept down. After that, her family members noticed that it, she was unconscious. She, they brought the patient to the emergency and she was not responding. We did the NCCT's brain to rule out any, uh, any CVA or anything else. So that CT was normal. What else we keep in mind? We keep in mind about the toxicities. Yes, anything uh, poisoning, etc. The next day, his profile was almost normal. Planter was also normal, mute. Next day, the patient become conscious, but he is not able to comprehend. He is not able to speak. She, she is not able to lift her arm. And on taking history, her son told us that she had similar kind of history in two, uh, episode, uh, two episodes of similar episodes in the past, which recovered by itself. Then when we, we were talking to the patient, she was trying to little bit opening her eyes, but not completely. So one of my residents told us, Sir, why not we test for the myasthenia? It was having quadriparesis, so why not to do this? So what we do, this is a simple test, ice pack test. We take out the ice pack and we put on the, around the eyes. And let that lady start opening her eyes. Then after a few, after a few hours, we did the neostigment test. And she improved markedly. We sended her investigations and it was found to be positive for the uh, positive for the myasthenia gravis. So that lady, that family got the diagnosis, she was treated well, and she is in the follow-up till now. It is about one year. Now, a few words about the clinical examination. Fever is the pain for physician. Jitne bhi a physician and the fever is the most difficult task to treat. So a 45-year-old male patient presented with fever since past one month. We did all basic investigations, CBC, malaria, Vidal, blood cultures, X-ray, even CECT chest plus abdomen, echo. Then one day, uh, one day that's why a dark complexion male. So one day we uh, we saw that there is a medrosis, that is the eyelashes are less and the, uh, eyebrows are less. And just what we did, we did a, we palpated his ulnar nerve. And what we got, it was thickened. There was no anesthetic patch over the, uh, over the arms or the body. But we sent a call to this, our dermatologist. And what they say, he, it looks like a pure neurotic type of leprosy and they took the skin scraping and it was found to be positive for mycobacterium. We treated with MDT and that patient responded very well. Now this patient, one another patient, he is a 61 year old male, this, is, this was a very interesting patient. Uh, 
he was shown there was a 61 year old male patient he shown to bhu with a history of fever with no localization since past two months and he remained in bhu for around one and half month and he says there is nothing happened they, they tried multiple antibiotics they did all investigation all investigations means they even tried pet scan also they do the pet scan also and it was negative there was nothing no source was coming out so it was a challenge for me before taking the patient it was a challenge to me ki what to do that man is used to lie down in the bed whole day the one day we take why he is lying down he is he is a lean and thin person why he is always keeping lying lie down there so we take the his uh, blood pressure we showed it it might be orthostatic hypertension and we took out we checked for the orthostatic hypertension he was having vast vast variation in the blood pressure while lying down and standing we sent the patient for tilt tilt table test and our physiologist narsing verma sir is uh, here he will he will definitely give a uh, light on this he was not able to do this we we talked about uh, with our physiologist and he says you know he there is autonomic dysfunction and then his son give a typical history jab bhu mein sir general ward mein rehte the tab to fever 1 did not 2 aata tha 103 aata tha lekin jab icu mein shift karte the due to low bp tab usko fever nahi aata tha so what does it mean it mean a temperature dysregulation was there so what we do we treated the orthostatic hypertension only we we don't have much 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 of the medicines we give fludrocortisone but he developed hypokalemia so we stopped it and we give midodrine only and he responded well and as our ward our ward was centrally AC, uh, air condition he don't have even a spike of fever during the whole course of uh, stay there in the hospital he remained there for about 20 21 days but there was no fever at all and he responded very well he he since 6 month last 6 month he is in the follow up and he is doing very well so we kept as a possibility of primary autonomic failure in this case although it is very difficult to treat this case but make this diagnosis but uh, provisionally i kept this diagnosis now investigation part what is the basics of the investigation the day one of a patient shows sgot of 25 40 sgpt of 17 60 and bilirubin of 12 the next day we sent the sample and we found this 15 32 and what what will be our reaction reaction of a physician oh our lab are bullshit what they are doing ha koi kuch theek se nahi dekhta hai then before saying this i talked to my biochemistry person who is the in charge of lab medicine the explanation they give it is very beautiful they says the sgot and sgpt level are so much high that they consume all the reagent so th that will not be picked up they did a two step test it will it will picked up if we do it in the dilution then only i will be able to give it somebody has done it directly so you are getting this low value so there is no issue in it but we have to understand what process is going through it so it is very very important to talk to your biochemist talk to your microbiologist talk to your pathologist before interpreting something and the most common thing what we face in the our clinical practice tsh is low normal ft4 is low and ft3 is low classical picture of sick youth thyroid syndrome we have to be very cautious when we are interpreting it because it can be a central hypothyroidism too so classical ses can be a differential of central hypothyroidism so we have to be cautious about it in the treatment part i am little bit uh, skeptical about uh, this treatment part yesterday dr uh, agrawal says there is no role of diabetic diet explaining focusing on diabetic diet i am 102% uh, disagree with him because if the first step is not done then how can we step further so diabetic diet we have to focus on we do we can't say that we don't have time so uh, th this is like this only but we, when we have to treat the patient we have to focus about the diabetic diet we have to tell them we have to keep the dietitian if we we are overburdened we have to increase our tea 
And another thing, very important thing, is de-escalation of therapy, especially in antibiotic. When a patient comes to you with sepsis, we give three, four antibiotic along with anti-malarial, along with antiviral. But once we got the diagnosis, the next day we got the diagnosis of anti-malaria uh, is positive. Please stop the antibiotics. Please stop the antivirals. So this practice should come in the mind. The, the thing which is not there, please stop the treatment for that. These are the three shaktiya for uh, the physician. Samvad, Sparsh and Samvedna. Th three sa. So Samvad is communication, Sparsh is touch and Samvedna is empathy. This is must for any clinician and it increases the patient and doctor relationship. We, 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 we all are clinicians here mostly. So we know the power of these. Now a few words about the research. So I am First of all, I think I would like to say thanks to Dr. Anuj Mahashuri who has inclined to our research in the undergraduates. We can clap for him, at least once we can clap for him because today also we have seen undergraduate to present research work. I have, I have never thought of this till my post-graduation when I did my thesis. Before that, I have never seen. So research, yes, it should be incorporated as soon as possible. We should do any, whatever we can do, surveys, registry, do observational studies, report, rare presentations of common diseases or rare diseases, do non-intervention, do non-intervention analytical studies. And sensitization, as the ACP is doing, it is a wonderful job. So this is the NMC's guidelines to do BCBR to every postgraduate student and the faculties also. Good clinical practice guidelines, our work also be to, done by the faculties. This, this make us sensitized towards the good practices in the research. Now this Google make this very convenient. The Dr. Murthy and uh, Madam has presented this study. This was quite, quite simple and it is done quickly because of this Google. They make the Google forms, make the action sheets. They are so simplized, simply from nowadays drive, classrooms, so we should thank towards to the Google. And furthermore, online prescription, writing made it more easy. You just write your prescription, you can turn into the actual sheets. Now academics, now the third pillar is the academics. Academics, so teaching a adult is a very different thing. So the adults are not, yes, say, yes, this is right, this is wrong. No, they will not understand. So there is totally different sets. There are various training sessions for the teachers, for the medical fraternity, the ways to teach, ways to learn in the, in the adulthood. There are various ways. Feedback. How, you do, how we used to give feedback to our teachers? Pahli class mein 40 log the, second class mein 80 log the. So this shows ki teacher achha padhata hai. Pahli class mein agar 60 log the, or second class mein 20 reh gaya. Iska matlab hai ki this is the feedback that no, teacher maza nahi aara. So this, this used to be the feedback at our time. But now, this is very important to take feedback. When I go to the medical, when I join the AIMS, this become the routine to take the feedback from the students. Develop their interest in teaching. Ask them what, what we are lacking. Doing the evidence-based practice. Critical thinking, how to critically analyze the things. So these are the various courses we are running. And now in the last, we know that teaching others make you the more inte most intelligent. So teaching others say, aapko learning hota hai. So since past six years, I am there in the AIMS. And I think, sabse zyada maine isi mein padhai kariya. Not in our, my UG days or in the PG days. This is the, my life slide. So teaching others is the most important thing. Practice. And you can see that lect giving lecture is only 5% is the fun. So basics are boon for future to groom. This is my last slide. So thank you. Thank you all.